Hello and welcome to another video um, here at Coding Freaks. Um, today I again, or I just hit my microphone, I don't think that is, that is good, but anyways. I have again kind of a strange thing running, uh, so <clears throat> this time again a PowerShell thing, like the last video. So why PowerShell? Because I recognize that one thing in the community is kind of, at least I don't see it that often, it's kind of, you know, uh, lowly represented in, on YouTube which is uh, talking about um, setting up your dev box, currently Windows dev box, whatever, to a certain state. It comes from just the fact that I have the need currently because my machine is kind of acting weirdly, like Windows machines do after this time, I think two years. So Windows 11 made it better, by the way. So usually it was every single year. And now after two years, I think I made so much settings, uh, so much new settings that now I need to come up with um, a fresh setup. I feel like it is. Anyway, so in doing that, I recognize I had a lot of scripts running. I'm using Chocolaty as in script manager, whatever, but I, you know, it wasn't that the streamlined experience. It was like me executing scripts, which I had in my brain. And then, uh, you know, when, when I, whenever I needed to, to tell that a colleague, I always say, well, you know, it definitely would not work unattended on your machine in the current state. So I recognized, ah, that's not what I want to do. And I came up with a project idea, which I want to showcase today. W disclaimer, whatever you will see today, it is highly better. It is not even better. It's alpha early stage, but I wanted, I decided to go out on GitHub publicly and share whatever I have and to see if feedback comes in from you guys. So I will present you something. I will have a demo today on a virtual machine. Um, uh, let's see how it works. Always uh, kind of freaky in that state. And I will give you a little deep dive into what the plan is. And with that, I will hop over to my screen uh, and then we can have a look at this. So I'm here on the public GitHub page of the new project Yetsi. So Yetsi stands for yet another desired state implementation. Uh, so implementation is kind of helpless to end with an I, to be honest, but you know, uh, whatever. So what this is, uh, a lot of people will ask me, what does desired state mean? Uh, so desired state is not what I came up with. Desired state is like a term uh, in, the, in the industry. And a lot of tools uh, are using desired state, even if you didn't know that it's desired state. So for instance, one of the tools uh, I know of is Kubernetes deployment. Uh, so Kubernetes deployments kind of, you don't tell Kubernetes in that case, what to do in which order and stuff, but you just tell Kubernetes, this is what I want to have. I want this service in that namespace and I want it to have this ingress rules. Whatever that means, just do it. And then Kubernetes will look at your deployment and just do whatever is necessary to achieve this state and exactly the same is true here there are uh, tools especially on windows to do that like intune powershell desired state configuration windows group policies whatever uh, but all of this stuff is it feels like enterprise stuff okay if you like me have a single dev box and you have some colleagues you can share that but you're not part of a windows active directory whatever then you're kind of lost. Um, and then you come up with some automation uh, and then this automation always, the, the one guy has it in this way, the other one in the, in the other way. And it's kind of, you know, not standardized, whatever. And then we have on the other side, all this new cool things like Chocolaty, Winget as package managers. We have a powerful tool like PowerShell in hand where you basically can do everything. Uh, on Windows. So I came up with the idea, hey, let's do a product uh, out of that or not a product, but you know, let's do something reusable. And it's, this is Yetsi. So Yetsi, I have some description here, uh, which tells you the current state of affairs, what I can do, what I cannot do, known issues, I cannot use drivers or whatever, I cannot do that and plans for the future. And then I have basically two files here. So you can watch here, this is a PowerShell thing and it's PowerShell only currently. It's a 400 line monster, 400 plus line monster here. And you know, it's not 
the best thing I could do with PowerShell and I can do better in terms of maintainability, but I decided to do a very, very simple script uh, so that the uh, actually um, running this thing is as easy as possible. And with, you know, you have a lot of um, stones in your way, possible stones, if you run that on a fresh windows. So I wanted to be, to make it as simple, usable as possible. This is a PowerShell. You should check it out before using it because it uses a lot of, you know, questionable commands. For instance, it uses invoke expression, which is a warning sign for basically every antivirus tool outside there because invoke expression executes arbitrary expressions in PowerShell by using strings and then just executing the string. And if it sounds bad to you, it, this is because it is fast. Uh, it is bad, not fast. I was reading this like 55% faster with GitHub, GitHub Copilot. I'm suspicious about that. But anyways, that was just distracting me. So whatever, uh, this is the script. And then I came up with the idea, hey, you know what? Let's do JSON. So what the script does, it's basically reading in this JSON schema. And this is one of the demo files. Uh, which I came up with. And as you can see here, the thing has some metadata at the top. So I can disable Windows sounds like the beeps and blobs and whatever, because they nerve me out. So that's why this is my tool currently. So I just was very picky about disabling wallpaper. I hate it. Just make this the background black for the moment. Um, remove the keyboard delay, which is there when you hold a key how long does it take him to understand that he needs to repeat it? It's lowering this uh, optionally. Uh, he is requiring Windows Terminal as a script. So if you don't run it in Windows Terminal as your terminal, it will not run. And if you have Windows Terminal, it will press F11, like send keys F11 to have a full screen per, um, experience. You will see that in a minute. Then I have an array of phases. So I split my, my setup process into phases because I enabled my script to have reboots between phases. So I did it and we can discuss this on a later point. And that was my biggest pain point. Mm. Because uh, there are certain installations which require you either to have a new terminal, which is not easy uh, to achieve inside of a script um, or even better to reload your system so that certain variables get updated, Windows fe features get um, activated, uh, they uh, most often need to reboot, stuff like that. So that's why I'm able to reboot as often as I want. Uh, I have names for faces, I can disable a face inside a virtual machine. I needed to bring this in today because I recognize that <laughs> I wanted to showcase uh, installing Kali Linux uh, as WSL on my system, which wasn't working because in a virtual machine, uh, in VMware, you, which is this one, oh, he's uh, saving my virtual machine state. Bad. I need to re-ramp it. Anyways, uh, so Kali Linux, uh, for instance, needs WSL and WSL is not running inside of VMware currently. So this is why I came up with uh, disabling in virtual machine optionally only on phases. So a phase then con uh, contains one or more steps and the steps have types. So currently I'm supporting, I think, four step types, which is PowerShell, Chocolaty, Winget and Windows Feature. Uh, so that means PowerShell is just you define the command. Here is where the dangerous stuff comes in and your system might think, well, is that a virus and might react in a certain way, whatever. You always have a command. Um, I think I'm putting uh, out now in, in it so that my screen is not destroyed, but you know, you can check it out in the script. So this is doing uh, some power configuration so that my machine is not doing what it's currently doing because I have to resume it. Uh, here in the back. Anyways, then uh, I'm stopping the beep service here and uh, I'm disabling the beep service because, you know, I don't want him in the terminal to beep whenever I have too much keys. You might have uh, heard this. Um, this here is, is it, this is, um, this is a step inside of my face, which is a choco step. So this then uses chocolatey which 
the, the script will ensure to be on the machine. You don't have to install Chocolaty beforehand. My script will do it. And it will uh, install those packages, including options, which is like an, a nice showcase how to install with options. Of course, I have peeping in place because this is a Coding Freaks cast. And, you know, if I have a tool out there, I definitely will install it. I then have a, a step with, for browsers. You will see that coming Google Chrome. And uh, also Choco then fonts with Choco just to prove that it's working. JetBrains Mono is one of my fonts when I go to Mono Spaces. I have an editor with VS Code. Let's install VS Code. And then I have WSL. So here comes a new step type, which is Win feature. Uh, Win feed is just you give it the name of the Windows feature. And those names are documented at Microsoft. And then it will enable this feature. And then at the end, when this feature is enabled, it will execute the WSL installation stuff to use WSL2 after it was enabled, and then to try to install Kali Linux, which this guy here will fail. Um, because if I run it in a virtual machine, it fails. Then after the reboot, this is the next phase, index one, this git setup uh, phase will just install git, uh, or no, configure git, and doing something which uh, all you might know, like in this case, my work email and my normal username or name to be in the global git config, which is good if it's done after the reboot, because then git should be part of the path environment and this command should just work. And then at the end, I'm trying to do Docker, but I disabled it in the virtual machine, so he should skip this step because it will not run. It will fail in virtual machines because Docker for desktop is using WSL by default and WSL isn't there because it's in a virtual machine, blah, blah, blah. So that is what it is. And to show, to give you an easy entry, I created this readme which gives you this one-liner here to copy out. And this one-liner is described here, what's going on there, so that you can be sure that no strange stuff is going on. Coding Freaks would never do that. But, you know, uh, just to be very transparent here, it's just all this in one line without the commands. And this is what he does. Uh, so it's described here. And with that, uh, let's try to um, log in to my VM. And here I am. And this VM already is set up. Uh, so what I want to show, I opened an administrative PowerShell. And I ensured already that this thing is set to Windows Terminal by default. So that the default terminal is Windows Terminal and not the Windows console host. This is important. With that in place, I can go all over, uh, can go over to uh, the samples, copy this out, go to my VM, and sometimes it's a little bit odd, but now it works. Paste it in, and then execute the script. So it will download the PowerShell file and the JSON file, and it will switch to full screen mode in, um, as you can see, in Windows Terminal. That is why I have Windows Terminal as a required thing. It's the only, the only needed thing, to be honest. <laughs> And uh, what I do here, I just parse in the JSON file and give you a summary so that you know what's going on. So I have three phases here with 11 steps, two of them disabled. I have one planned reboot uh, and, um, you know, eight Choco packages, two Windows features and 10 posh commands. I give you um, a warning. The script will ensure that Chocolaty and Winget are present if they are needed for the steps. So that is what I told you. It will install Choco in a second. And be aware that this script will execute plan reboots whenever needed or defined. So I just wanted to be kind. When you type in anything else, then yes, it will just do nothing and go out of the full screen mode. But if you redo your command, it will go there too and it waits for an actual yes. And then it goes on. And I don't know if I will um, edit the video in order to speed up things, but you know, this, these steps should not be taking too long. So what he's currently doing, he's installing Chocolaty because it wasn't there. After it installed Chocolaty, it's clearing the screen because, you know, Chocolaty needs some output and it's disturbing my screen. But then I wanted to have this clean output here to have a little bit like a, you know, indented um, uh, view. 
Um, I wasn't able to do something like, you know, progress yet because progress always is a little bit wonky. Um, and now he goes in and he, uh, in the first uh, step, he did the setup, which included removing the background, uh, which you cannot see because the terminal is in front. And he's disabling sounds, he's disabling the hibernation stuff. So energy is going to off, off, off on everything. You need to reset it up. But because this is not a, comp a laptop, I'm totally fine with that. Disabling the beep servers and now he's going to chocolatey. And now what he does is, it's always hard uh, here to have all this scripted. So you just go over to chocolatey um, and go into the documentation of git install, which installs git on your machine. And then if you use git install instead of the git package, by the way, on chocolatey, you get all those nice params uh which here in this case set the editor to vs code have clf uh disabled as automatic default branch name is main and master and stuff like that then it installs 7 zip nuget command line because this is some common stuff which you need uh in order to install other stuff you know so git 7 zip nuget hmm, for reasons and then of course peeping because peeping is just important because I did it. So anyway, so port ping, then a browser, Google Chrome, because we are stuck with Edge currently on a, a default Windows 11. And if this is done, he should do some other packages. And keep in mind that before I ran this, uh, on, this on that machine, there was no Git, there was no VS Code, there was nothing installed, just plain minimum Windows 11. Uh, and nothing was configured or so, only the updates were there and that's it. And VMware tools. So he installed a font because Choco can do it. That is why I'm uh, what I'm relying on. You see sometimes that something is popping up from the background, which is currently a problem because you will see it after the reboot. My machine will lose focus. Um, and then when, when I lose focus, I lose control over the machine. So I have to regain focus probably in order to be able to control this stuff. Now an interesting step, after he did uh, the packages, now he is enabling the Windows 11 feature virtual machine platform and the feature Windows subsystem for Linux. Now this is bad, I don't want this. I don't know if it's why it's coming because I was already in an administrative PowerShell. Anyways, so when you want to install Kali, he brings this up. And this should take some seconds here uh, and it should fail because Kali cannot be installed on a, a virtual machine. Probably, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm, I'm betting that it's ending in, a, uh, in an error message. Anyways, uh, what you can see here is that I basically wanted this to have a normal output, which is readable, which is not disturbed by uh, any outputs from the things I installed. So I basically go to out now, I do error action silently continue, uh, warning action silently continue, all of that is going on. I need to get better with logging. Um, so I need to enable logging to file so that you have this default log file. By the way, the default location for the download and for files I need uh, is your home folder. Now he informs you that 10 second report is coming up. Do nothing, face in it finished, and then he reboots. So this is easy, okay? The hard part is in PowerShell to re-come up. How I do it, um, I created a task with task scheduler, so a scheduled task, which runs on lock-on. And I enabled it to run as um, administrator so that this task is simply recalling my script with the same definition file I had and because I created a state JSON inside of the folder he will find the state JSON and now my script is kind of stateful and aware that it already ran through phase one and it should come up in phase two uh, and going over phase two after he did all of that now he's rebooting the timing is pretty good currently, actually. Um, I don't have to cut here, I think. So now VMware is my machine, cool. So you see a reboot and Windows 11 is coming up. That's nice. Let me have a sip of coffee. 
Mm -hmm. We shouldn't hear, I, I don't think I have computer sounds on, but so you have to believe me, but I don't hear, oh, updates underway. I will. I expect not to hear a Windows welcome sound, a Windows shutdown sound, stuff like that, because this is what my script turned off because I hate them. But this is optional, you saw it. So let's go here and log in and do nothing. Hands off. Let's see. Come on. By the way, I don't know how much hardware I should throw on virtual machines on VMware. This is 16 gigs of RAM, four CPUs, and this is my outcome. And I'm not sure if I am allowed to expect more, but it feels like in the last 10 years, I had major upgrades on my hardware. Okay, skip for now. Uh, let's back up your files. Thank you. Uh, no, let's not do it. So here it is. And the only thing it's re it's restarting, but it's not uh, doing this here because it has not the focus. So that's what I said. I need to regain focus. So he again detects that I'm in a run, running in a virtual machine and he says he phase three of three Docker is disabled in VM. So he detected that and he's skipping this. He only did uh, this one here. So we can check this out by catting git config. And yes, he, this commands actually worked. I am here in the git config and git is installed and peeping should work. And it kind of starts a little bit slow because it's .NET um, in a single package. First start always is slow. So I'm hoping for .NET 8. Yeah, it works. Peeping Google DE uh, 80. Oh, uh, peeping google.com 80. And here we go, peeping is working. So the setup worked kind of, and I should, yeah, I have VS Code installed, all this stuff. What else did I add? Um, I don't know what, what else was VS Code and other stuff, whatever. So it worked, kind of. So not everything worked. I have to redo that on a real machine, which is not so easy to do. And I maybe need to record that with a camera so that you can see it. Um, I'm, I'm currently thinking how to do it because it will consume a lot of time here on this machine. I have a snapshot uh, where I can go to and then I can re, uh, re debug, but I definitely need to st uh, to test this on a real machine in order to test if WSL is, is working. So currently I, this is it. Uh, let's go to README. There's more to come. So I'm currently planning on having Git clone tasks so that you can say, you know what? I want to uh, have my default Git repo folder and then I want there to be a task which clones certain Git repositories. Uh, progress store for item potency. So what I mean by that is that I will constantly store my progress. So if something goes wrong, you just can re-execute the script and it will proceed where it is, even not uh, on reboot, but just, you know, just in case if something goes wrong in between. Nicer output, I know, could be nicer. Let's see, JSON schema. Yes, I want to have my definition as a JSON schema, which then, for instance, in VS Code, maybe has IntelliSense support. So I'm curious about that, I never did it. Config editor, maybe there will be a UI web UI or something to in order to generate the config in a more convenient way and to spit out the JSON. Then more system preps. So what I want terminal settings override from public link. Oh, yeah. So I'm what I want here is the terminal settings is a JSON file. And you know, there could be a step saying, Hey, there on the public, there is a public available link with my settings JSON, please replace the settings JSON so that my terminal instantly is uh, configured as I am used to have it configured. Uh, terminal configuration for all my posh and stuff like that. Default browser set up in the Windows system so that he is no longer complaining. Then background image, mm, just nice stuff. Login screen image, okay. Um, then color preset uh, to select black or whatever, dark mode or whatever. Taskbar layout, I just found out that you can um, here at the bottom if this is your preferred taskbar layout, it turns out for me that it always was bad when I lost it. 
so um, there is a way uh, in XML or JSON, I can remember, to define that and tell Windows, well, do it this way. Okay. VS Code extensions, that would be interesting to be able, after VS Code installed, to give him a set of extensions that he should enable. Same as for Visual Studio Installer, um, Choco has ability to um, define Visual Studio features, so to define, to install the installer of Visual Studio and then to tell him what options to check. I know it's, um, it's there, but it turns out it's not very stable. So it often just breaks down. So we will see logging, as I said, font installer without Choco. So what if I have a font which is not a Chocolaty or Winget? I just want to download a uh, WAF or whatever and want to install it. This could be a new step because fonts are pretty important. Uh, Winget fixing uh, here because Winget currently is a little bit bitchy, uh, to be honest, uh, or it was a little bit bitchy. Uh, I don't know, can I show that? Uh, yeah, Kali Linux is not working because I'm a virtual machine. Yeah, thanks for that. Let's go to terminal um, here on the virtual machine and then I think when I do winget search, uh, I don't know, uh, what can I, Chrome? I was getting errors here, a lot of errors, the last time I did this, and I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, this is first problem I have, in terms of um, use in winget, first usage, thank you for that, N nice. It's very bad for automation to have something like that in the way. Turns out there is actually a command where you can skip over that. Uh, let's say yes. Uh, so now he is coming up. But now if I want to win get install something, uh, I got errors um, at least last weekend or so. And looking up uh, in the internet, it told me that a lot of people had this problem. Um, I don't, I, I'm not sure what's going on, but you know, win get kind of is bitchy, as I said. Anyways, uh, so all of this and then porting to Mac or Linux, which will be obviously a pretty complete diff different project because there is no Windows features on Mac OS or Linux, Linux. And this is completely different and I probably would need support for that from other people because I'm pretty good at uh, PowerShell automation when it comes to Windows. Pretty good was a little bit too confident, I think. Um, let's say I'm not a beginner. But when it comes to Mac or Linux, to be honest, I know that Brew exists and Apt and that you should not use Apt, but other tools, I know that. Um, and no, but that's it. And I can use it to bring my Kali Linux to a certain state, but that's it. There is no more I could do. That is why I am currently have this on a far reach backlog and that's it. Anyways, uh, let's go back to my uh, full face here. Hi guys. Uh, so. This was my introduction to Yetzi. So I don't know if this raises any interest in the community or in that community here, which is pretty uh, small, I know, but it should be kind of interesting, I think, for every developer because spinning up your machine is always painful and it shouldn't be. Um, on the other side, the tools available kind of are not suitable, at least for me. Um, and that is why I think this is a problem that not only I have, and I hope you guys reach out and come up with some ideas or maybe um, just give me hints by starring the repo or whatever, uh, just to see if I'm on the right track. I will proceed, but if I again don't get feedback from the community, of course I will proceed for myself, okay? So then what you can do is take out some tricks for PowerShell if you find it useful and that's it, that's totally okay. I just wanted to have it on the video here to give you the opportunity to say, hey guy, um, I need this too. Maybe we can pair up, maybe I can help. I have ideas, whatever, then we can create a little backlog and let's see where this leads us. That is it. Thanks for listening. Um, see you next time. Bye.